Hadi. Tukirudi hapa jijini Nairobi mtazamaji na kupeleka moja kwa moja hadi katikati majiji kuu la Kenya Nairobi ambapo kwa sasa gavana wa benki kuu ya Kenya bwana Patrick Njoroge anatoa taarifa na tumsikize. I believe many of you are here on Tuesday and there's nothing that we restricted and we don't really restrict it in the post NPC press conference and this was just six days ago so I think a lot of the issues that you want to handle then to do with anything and everything I think those were handled. Today is quite uh, restricted in the sense of what we're going to speak about for many reasons. One, we want to stick to the subject at hand and secondly as you must understand with the announcement that was made on Saturday today is an extremely busy day for everyone trying to make sure that everything happens and I believe the government has first time as well. So if you agree with those rules that the governor speaks all the way through, we will come to Q&A and we will do it the usual way that we do it. Everyone will have a chance to ask you in case you need to ask. But it's restricted only to the issue of the new generation currency for notes and coins. If you agree to that, governor, please. Thank you very much. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, uh, members of uh, the press and indeed fellow citizens. Today, I, we gather to discuss and to give you more information about the new currency that was launched on Saturday, June 1, uh, and uh, came into existence by means of a Gazette notice on May 31, 2019. Obviously, this is a major milestone for the country, the financial sector, and indeed CBK. It's actually a milestone by extension for every one of us, every Kenyan, and we should be proud of this moment. So later on in the uh, presentation, I will ask uh, that the bank notes be brought to you. They are already in circulation. They are already in circulation. I repeat that. They are already in circulation. And uh, I would want you to see some of them and, uh, and for you to actually see the, uh, them as they are. You can feel them and so forth. The points to make are as follows. First, this involved a long process. I would actually add the word arduous in, the, in this long and arduous process. And we have followed all the applicable laws to get to this point. And uh, in terms of the quality of the notes, we have uh, tried also listening to the public. We've tried to put together a set of notes that we'll be proud of. Um, we've also listened to the population. Um, as you know, we actually did public, um, we involved the public in the designs of uh, the notes and the various features on it. The coins, if you recall, had the pictures of our, or had images depicting our wildlife. And uh, in the case of these banknotes, they are depicting various elements of our, of our activity, you know, economic activity, and aspects of things that uh, relate to our prosperity, economic prosperity. So we have green energy, we have agriculture, we have tourism, we have, uh, um, I've forgotten the other one, and also we have uh, uh, governance. Um, these are actually the other one of sports, I'm sorry. Uh, how could I forget that? How could I forget that? So those are, that's, on, that's what has been uh, depicted on it, on the back side of the notes. On the front side of the notes, um, a, one of the images that is there is really of the Kenyatta International Conference Center. Um, and uh, it actually is something that all of us find recognizable. And in, a, in my words, when we launched this, this is iconic, the building. And I think everyone in the entire country recognizes that structure. I think we all know how those of us that come to Nairobi the first time, the first thing they want to see is uh, Kenyatta International uh, 
conference center and take their pictures there because it, it is part of our um, sort of landmarks in our country. There are other images, for instance, there's an image of a dove at the front, uh, which again symbolizes peace. There are images of animals coming through the numbers um, and uh, the big five, as I explained during the launch. So in sum, the design of the notes has satisfied every applicable law. It has satisfied public participation. We got a lot of ideas. For instance, as I have said before, one of the ideas from the public was to make the notes more accessible to visually impaired persons. And uh, consistent with that, if you look at the notes, you'll see there are certain elements that make it much more accessible. There are certain bars um, that allow um, that sort of feeling of what the note is. There's also the numbers are raised. Um, also, the at least to give it distinction, and also the the writing of the uh, of the name Kenya and so forth. Now, those are not the only features, but I wanted to assure you members of the public, members of the press, that uh, this was an effort that uh, was thorough, followed the law, and indeed successful at the end. So right here I would want to thank everyone who was involved in this. First and foremost, the population, by giving us their, their ideas and also giving us time to deal with the issues that came up. I also want to thank uh, the other um, supporting, uh, let's say, those that supported us going forward, other parts of, uh, of uh, the governance structure. Um, and finally, of course, I want to thank our own central bank staff that have worked tirelessly, I would even say many long nights here in the central bank. Uh, or long days, and uh, have done the, the entire process with remarkable precision and accuracy, and indeed uh, with uh, utmost discretion. So that's what I want to say about that, and we'll, you'll see the notes as we complete the presentation. In terms of the way forward, uh, we will we'll continue to release the new bank notes uh, to all the banks, all banks and microfinance institutions. Of course, at this moment, if you go to a bank, what you'll find is they'll probably have stocks that were there last, uh, last Friday, meaning not the new um, bank notes, but very soon they'll be in every single uh, banking hall, or rather bank branch, every single uh, microfinance branch, and I think the point is this, this, uh, this is expected to, um, to work as, as uh, well, sort of seamlessly. Would also say that an element that needs to be, that is now in high gear, is uh, the element of public awareness. That has really kicked into high gear and uh, explaining to the public the various elements you've seen, for instance, we've been making uh, a campaign in the media, both print, TV, and very soon radio as well. So it is important that this information gets to the deepest corners of our republic, to every single person um, that is uh, within our borders. There's also some other work that needs to be done, but those are technical issues. Um, banks need to recalibrate their, their, their accounting machines and all those other things. But that, I mean, that is, you know, that is work. That's par for the course. There's no concern about those considerations. So I think in, uh, in, in a nutshell, it is important to appreciate that milestone and also appreciate that uh, this is uh, something that uh, we should be very proud of as a nation very proud of as a citizen of this country, um, and obviously very proud of 
if you have been associated with this particular project. That said, and you probably uh, be agree with me, that yes, a lot of people have been very pleased with this. The population, in terms of the people you interviewed and others in the newspapers yesterday and elsewhere, and indeed even today on the various uh, media outlets and so forth, there's been a lot of support um, and joy and gratitude for achieving this milestone. Those, I think, are important to appreciate. Those are the sentiments of the people that have been expressed. That said, yes, there are other elements that don't see it that way. And uh, obviously, I uh, uh, believe that uh, things may have not been done in that way, in that process. And uh, there are some that have made the claim that they do want to uh, get their own assurances that the process was done correctly, and that's fine. Um, I think they, they, it's fine for people to make those questions, but I think the point here is that uh, we need to move ahead with the things even as we answer those questions. In particular, um, one of the reasons I was late just now is that we've just um, uh, a legal challenge has just been filed in one of the courts. And uh, we have to deal with that. Um, we are not waiting for it. Uh, we think this is uh, more than just an inconvenience. It is, uh, it is uh, something that uh, we wouldn't call for. But so be it. Uh, we are obviously willing to deal with those issues in a matter of urgency. Uh, matter of urgency. There's nothing worse than having uncertainty with regard to the currency, nothing worse. Because every one of us uses that currency day in, day out. So it is important for every single Kenyan to have that assurance, and this is why we would want those matters to be dealt with with due urgency, with due haste. Now I want to go to the next part, which is uh, the Gazette notice that was also the, sec the second Gazette notice that was issued on May 31, withdrawing the currency. That is withdrawing the shillings 1,000 uh, banknotes that were prior to the new generation banknotes. Um, I called it in my speech the 1,000 shillings old series banknotes. So this is really distinguishing them again with the new generation ones. The new generation ones remain, and you'll get a chance to look at them in a minute. But the anything issued that's just the 1,000, not the others, just the 1,000 um, Kenya shilling banknotes, those have been withdrawn. And uh, the Gazette notice indicates that they will cease to be legal tender on October 1. 2019. So that is the clarity of the Gazette notice. Um, it is true that there are those that claim that uh, we had no right to do to issue, to withdraw the currency, and I think we will have that moment in court. Um, the point is that we have always had that right, and uh, we have used it in the past. So this isn't the first time we are using it. So I think uh, we will make our claims, we'll make our argument in court, um, because this is just part of our normal operation, part of our currency management, um, of which we have complete independence. Um, so the, that is something that is enshrined in the Constitution, but I think uh, the arguments will be heard in court. So we've mo made this uh, withdrawal of currency. What was behind it? I think in the speech I mentioned that there were two reasons, principal reasons. The first is to deal with the illicit financial flows that we have seen. The second is to deal with uh, counterfeits that have begun to emerge. The illicit financial flows, uh, one of you asked me recently, uh, we have the numbers. Now I would add that, I would say that, uh, you know, it would be a bit heroic for the 
those that are engaged in illegal activity uh, to tell the central bank what the activity is. You understand, right? What is their volume? It doesn't quite work that way. Um, but uh, sure, there are estimates, but uh, and we in the central bank don't have estimates of that. We don't do that. Um, but I think there are a lot of people there the, um, that deal with, there's actually even an institution that deals with, in, with, in, um, with illicit financial flows and they have their estimates. But I would rather look at something else. You have seen some of the cases that have been coming through uh, in terms of uh, illicit flows, um, illicit transactions. You've also seen you know, things related to, let's say, I would say odd transactions. You can call them fake gold or whatever else it is. And on the, on, there is always a second leg of that transaction, which is the flow of the cash and the finances. So you do have a good estimate of some of it. And at the end of the day, you don't need to have a, an overall picture. You don't have to be very precise. All you know is Ikoshida. And the Ikoshida is enough for you to act. Um, and uh, if the Ikoshida is not enough, then we have a problem. Um, I guess the point is you don't wait until the house is really burning before you use the fire extinguisher. When you begin to smell smoke, you know, grab that fire extinguisher and begin to deal with it. Okay. So that's really what I want to say about the, the illicit financial flows. The point also is they are not just in Kenya. They are also in our neighboring countries. In effect, Kenya, a Kenyan currency, the Kenyan shilling, is the regional US dollar. I mean, in the way, say, around the world, you have people that, you know, you can use the US dollar, at least for the most part, um, and you can use it even for paying uh, taxes and other transactions like that. Well, the, US, the Kenya shilling actually has similar um, let's say, uh, well, the acceptance, um, not just in the East African community area, but also wider, beyond those East African community uh, boundaries. And so it, it is therefore important to make sure that our currency is not tainted by those illicit financial flows. Now, why the illicit financial flows are becoming more problematic now, I don't know. That's for others to write um, the history or, for that matter, uh, papers and all those other things. The point here is that, yes, this is, a, this is, a, this is something that is emerging and uh, Ikoshida, therefore, we need to deal with it um, quickly and conclusively. There's another trend which is counterfeits. This has not been there and, again, I would say that uh, the Kenyan currency has many security features that have yet been uh, <coughs> dealt with, if you understand what I'm saying here. So actually the counterfeits that we have seen recently, and you have reported it quite widely in, the, in, your, um, in your outlets, has been kind of very poor. But that's not the point. The point you can see the intention of these people. Um, clearly they can see there's something there. Um, so I think the point here is we have to deal with them conclusively. And this is the reason, the second reason, uh, for this, uh, this measure of withdrawing the older series 1,000 uh, shilling banknotes. Now, having said that, some of you are concerned that, uh, and they have heard a lot about the, what happened in India, uh, and uh, wonder, will we have a similar problem? The point is, we, have, we need to learn from the experiences of others. And I would want to submit that we actually looked at the matter in India, why things went the way they went. Meaning, what are the learning points? What are maybe the mistakes that they made uh, from a perspective of the outcomes? It's true there are significant effects, long lines, current, the, uh, the, 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 um, uh, the yeah, the long runs. The they were, the economy actually uh, shrunk, or rather, the growth rate came down precipitously. But I think the point here is that we had. Uh, if you may, there are some points we learned from them, and I want to repeat uh, from this. By the way, it's not unusual 
to have demonetization. Maybe India is the most famous example, but there are other examples. Um, and I would actually mention two. Well, actually, I'll mention three. Um, there is the example of uh, Zimbabwe uh, some time ago, where they demonetized their own currency and actually ended up going to the uh, rand, US dollar, euro, and, uh, and that's the, the, the currencies that they were using at the time. But they demonetized, they withdrew their own currency. This obviously was an trying to deal with more fundamental issues. I won't go into the history of it. You know the history as much as I do. There was also the demonetization of uh, the other, let's say, other European currencies at the time of the euro, when the euro was introduced. And uh, obviously, we can talk about the DMARC as an exception in many ways. Um, but I think the point is you, they demonetized the, the lira, the Spanish peseta, and all those other things. I think, again, we know why that was the case. I just, again, want to insist that demonetization is not something that is, it's a tool of central banking. It's a tool, like any other, that has to be used correctly. There's also the example of, uh, of uh, the, uh, actually, Kenya. We demonetized at the end of 2011. Um, and, uh, the, for instance, you know, the, the five shilling note is, is not valid today i.e. we demonetized it, we withdrew it. So there are many examples, but I think I want to, to leave, leave those with you. What are the lessons that we learned from the Indian uh, experience? First is that there was, uh, they decided to um, demonetize immediately, meaning the announcement was made and immediately the currency could not be used for transactions, meaning it, it was not, it ceased to be legal tender upon announcement. Now, you can imagine what happened. Let's say you're a truck driver. Um, you're moving from point A to point B and you stop for lunch at a particular place and, uh, and then it gets demonetized and that's all you have. I mean, you have problems about your lunch, you have problems about your, where you're gonna buy your fuel because you don't have money to continue. So you can imagine what happened then. And the next instant was, I need to change this because they gave you 50 days to transact that, I mean, to change your now non-legal tender to a new bill which would, have been, which would have been legal tender, try to go to a bank, but they didn't have the currency. So there was a shortage, you understand, because it takes time to do some of these things. So you can already see what was a, the decision would lead to some serious crisis. And that's really what happened. So, and this is why we have um, allowed a sort of a, a period where the transactions will continue. You can continue to transact, but at a particular time, October 1, it will cease to be legal tender. Now there is a question that has come up, but governor, why did you give them four months? You're being too generous. If, uh, why not do it in a month or in a week? And I think that question is valid. The answer is simple. There is a balance that we have to, uh, to there's a balance that we have to strike. And this relates, for instance, to our people, Wanjiko. Think of your Shosho. Right? And uh, maybe when you visited her, um, you felt really generous and you gave her five crisp $1,000, uh, one, not dollar, 1,000 shilling uh, banknotes. And she's been keeping them and all those other things. You see, she doesn't go to the bank. She's not like you and me in terms of going to the local bank all the time and all those other things. And it will, take time for the information to filter to her. The point is, if you were too aggressive and brought it and closed that too quickly, you'd, ha you'd have a very onerous task, or rather you'd put a lot of pressure on the Wanjiko, the common person who is actually doing the right thing and uh, actually has no concerns in terms of illicit flows or counterfeits and things like that. So in effect, the people who will be punished the most 
will not just be the the, the crooks, the ones that are punished the most largely would be the, the shoshos and our people who are at a different level. So this is why we need to have it, we, we have this balance and, and, and hope that it is a correct balance, you know. And obviously there's judgment there and uh, our judgment was that was a balance, we could strike it there. So the second thing, as I said, in terms of lessons was that there wasn't enough cash in ATMs, in uh, long, and there were long lines and things like that. So it is important for us to make sure that the currency is available in all the banks. And our intention is, um, in a matter of days, it should be available in every single bank outlet, i.e. every single branch in the country. That is our intention. And uh, I think we can get to it. Um, uh, we can get to it. Then the other thing is uh, the issue of having a strong AML CFT framework. Strong AML CFT framework. Um, the Nam bila shaka mtazamaji huyu hapo Gavana Patrick Njoroge Gavana wa Benki Kuu ya Kenya akizungumza kuhusiana na noti mpya ambazo zilizonduliwa siku ya Jumamosi kwenye sherehe za madaraka mtazamaji na anasema kwamba wametumia kila njia yoyote kuna kwamba wananchi wameelewa kuhusiana na noti na noti hizi ambapo vile vile anatangaza kwamba benki zitaweza kupata noti mpya kuweza kujisambaza tayari na kusema kwamba bado mpango huo kufikia Oktoba mosi ni kwamba noti za elfu moja zilizo kwa sasa kwenye maduka zitakuwa zinatumika hivyo basi kuomba kwamba benki na pia mashirika mengine ya fedha yote yale yaweze kutumia benki mpya ambazo zimeza kuzunduliwa na vile vile ametaja kwamba hii ni hatua ya kuona kwamba wanapambana na ufisadi pamoja na pesa gushi na kusema kwamba kwa sasa ipo shida na inahitaji kutatuliwa na hatua hiyo ambayo ameweza kuchukua ndio ya kutatua tatizo lililopo na kumbuka kwamba kesi zimeweza kuwasilishwa mahakamani wakiongozwa na bwana Okio Mutata ambaye ni mtetezi wa haki za Ben Adamu ameweza kusema kwamba mpango mzima basi hujaweza kuzingatia sheria na kusema kwamba picha ya mzee Jomo Kenyatta mwanzilishi wa taifa la Kenya basi uh, haifai kuwa kwenye noti zile na kusema kwamba vile vile mpango huu wa kufikia Oktoba mosi kuweza kuondoa noti zilizopo kwa sasa za elfu moja sio mpango ambao nakubalika kikatiba na hilo basi nalipinga kwenye mahakama vile vile amesema kwamba zinafaa kutumika pamoja na noti zilizopo kwa sasa zile noti mpya anasema kwamba zitumike pamoja na noti zilizopo kwa sasa za elfu moja hadi pale noti zilizopo ama noti mzee zitaweza kutoka madukani mtazamaji na hivyo basi anasema vile vile wananchi hawakuweza kuhusishwa kwa hivyo ni taarifa ambayo tunazidi kuipa kipo mbele tuone pengine itakamilikia wapi mahakama itaamua vipi je itasitisha usambazaji wa noti mpya ama itakuwaje ni taarifa ambayo tunazidi kuifuatizia na kina zaidi kuhusiana na taarifa hiyo utakuwa unapata mwendo wa saa kwenye taarifa za business today